Hey everyone, happy day after Thanksgiving. I hope you had a great day yesterday and I am, it was an easy day for us. We just had one of our kids at home, the rest of them were elsewhere. So it was weird making this big dinner for three people. But um, one of our, the one son who came to visit us is taking food to the others. So um, I intend to clean out the fridge today. As I finished um, doing the dishes last night, I thought, you know, I'm so in the mood for some Christmas stitching. I did start Newcastle Bouquet by Teresa Kogut. A friend from Instagram, Debbie Horton, and I are um, stitching that together. So I posted that on my Instagram page and I was thinking ahead to what do I really want to stitch in December? And then I was thinking about what do I love to stitch? Who, whose Christmas patterns do I love? And there are, were a lot of designers. So as I was kind of thinking through the plans from now until Christmas, and I haven't decorated yet, although I've seen a lot of people post their home decor and home tours on YouTube. So it's inspired me to get my, my de decorations out probably today or tomorrow and decorate my home and really think about my cross-stitch plans for the month of December. One of my most popular videos that I've had before in the past was the video where I showed you my Blackbird whips and finishes and patterns and just thought through maybe some of the plans and um, what I would want to stitch out of those books. And so I thought I would just do a shorter video, a little more abbreviated, where we just look at some of the Blackbird winter or Christmas patterns because they're phenomenal. Um, I do have some finishes. I have, I have one Christmas Blackbird whip but I've got some patterns and I thought we would just chat for a bit and take a look and you can help me plan what you think I should work on in December. So I'll start with, um, well, first of all, Blackbird has not, they're so multi um, craft oriented. They have not only cross stitch, but a variety of other um, needlework. I would say there's wool applique in some of their books. There's certainly quilting, they have quilting books <clears throat> and they have uh, punch, um, not punch needle. They might have some punch needle, but uh, rug hooking. So let's talk about cross stitch because that's what we're here is about cross stitch. I'll show you one of the um, quilt books toward the end, but it's primarily about cross stitch today. So this one I started last year with Melanie from Melanie Yarns and Threads. She just posted a video and I think in one of her most recent videos, she showed this as a whip and she and I are about the same, um, same distance in. This is Into All a Good Night, right? Into All a Good Night. Um, this one, I don't think here, I'm going to move you just a little bit. So don't get seasick. This one is not in print. I am hopeful that some of the Christmas items that are out of print will be in a future book. Now they do have a new book coming out and I think I saw there's a sampler coming out in December also that is Christmassy. So hopefully this gets re-released. This one, the what's interesting about this one is that the, the main brick color is raspberry parfait. And my raspberry parfaits, I have three skeins of it and they look completely different. The dye lots look very different. Now, I think the more stripey one is probably the one I'm going to use. But look at this. They don't look anything alike, right? It looks like this one is a combination of these two. But definitely, I think I need the variegation in the thread to achieve the brick effect that's on the, the pattern. So, and to all a good night, and I have... It's not 32 count, but I just have like the tiniest little start. I'm really thinking I need to work on this one in December because honestly, it's not a huge pattern. Um, there is a lot of stitching in here for sure, but it's not a huge pattern. So that is um, and to all a good night. That one, unfortunately, is not in print, but there are a lot that are in print. So... For example, this one, I'm just going to hold this up and hopefully you can, nope, I'm going to take it out. 
This one is started as a dying to club stitch, dying to stitch club piece. This is called Merry Christmas, um, and it's a pin drum. I have the kit from the club, but this one has just been released this year as uh, a standalone pattern. And a lot of people have stitched, already started this, or they fully finished it. And I saw um, one person who was making the stacked hoop finish, where they stack like six hoops, glue them together, stain it, put a base on it, and then the top was this. And it was a great idea. Great idea. In fact, I, I'm thinking I might do that. Although I do, I do love that pin drum. So we'll see. That one was Merry Christmas. Another one that was released, I think it was, I don't know if it was last year or the year before. This one is available. The Bells on Christmas Day. This was first a standalone pattern, which I have. I think you get this one at that time from the attic. So I called down immediately and ordered it because, you know, all the Blackbird. And uh, this one is just, that house is phenomenal. And the bouquets of flowers. I love those. And the border. I really like the border on this one too. Now this one, I do have a little, the booklet because it has some additional patterns. Um, this one, what I love about this one is the color palette. Because red and green, that's my jam. And I have a lot of that in my house. I have a lot of red. I have green. I have red, green, and gold, really, in my house with black. So that one, it does say peace on earth on it. Like right here, it says peace on earth. But honestly, if that's the colors in your house, I think that one could stay up on my wall all year long. Another... Um, Christmassy design is one of the stockings. So Merry Christmas. What I love about these stockings is you could take this and make a pinky out of it, right? You could just stitch this and, and then pull the alphabet over and just do one. You could do a pinky. You could do a small framed piece. You could put this in the front of a needle book. It doesn't have to be a stocking, but it does require you to do a little bit of movement of the pattern over and maybe abbreviate some of the sides to make it, um, I don't know, so it's not wonky and that there's not a big bulge in the middle. <laughs> you can do that. But um, I do love this one. There's a couple more in here. And these have been, maybe it's better if I go to this side. These have been, these were out of print, but they have been released, re-released, and you can get these most needle workshops. So Merry Christmas stocking. Um, this is the December um, stocking. Um, then, that's not Christmas. Here's one that I picked up from the Dying to Stitch Club also. And I want to say this is in one of the books, but I don't remember. This is called Tis the Season. It's a needle book. And what I love is the colors in this one. The colors are phenomenal. Let me see if I can pull this out of the, the bag. Again, these are my colors. Reds, pinks, greens, golds, neutrals together. Um, now this one, I've been meaning to start this one for quite a while. This might, this is a contender for stitching in December. I don't know that I've seen many people stitch it. I'm sure people have, and maybe I just don't remember it. Um, but I, I like, I think y'all have said, many of you have said that you like that I stitch things that not everyone else is stitching. And it's true because it does kill my buzz a little bit when I start stitching something and 5 billion other, you know, it just floods my Instagram page, which I like it when, um, I'm already stitching on it and underway. But if I haven't started, sometimes it, it stops me and it's mental, right? I don't, it is what it is. Okay, so here's the next one. This one is absolutely available. Frosty's Night Out. And um, I know Darlene Baumgartner. She's one of our stitchers at Acorns and Threads on First Thursday. Now she just moved, which is so, so sad. But um, she she stitched this and uh, she said, it just didn't seem like a regular Blackbird. But I kind of like that about this. I kind of like that, you know, they take risks and they they make what they like. And, and I like that about Blackbird. It's interesting that it was stitched on Murky. Um, certainly you could stitch this on 
a variety of fabrics. It would be pretty on like a, a darker blue. Um, it would be pretty on just a, maybe like a meadow rue, lakeside meadow rue or um, autumn gold. Um, anything that's got like a darker background to it where the white would just pop off the page. So that one is adorable. I'm not sure if I will get to that one this year. Oh, here's the bells on Christmas day. Okay, so here's the book, the bells on Christmas day. And there's that pattern that was first released to the attic. I want to say this might've been part of the attics. Like there's a Christmas type of retreat gathering that they had a couple of years ago. They might have it every year. I'm not sure. Um, but this one came out and of course I had to get the book and I also love, love, love this one here. So I think with that one that, um, so I think they call it a button bag. I would just, I would probably, it looks like they coffee tea dyed fabric. And I think I would do the same thing on that one. Just give it a good soak, right? Cause I love the vintagey, um, sort of worn look to that fabric. There's the bells on Christmas day. Um, this was a project I think they did at the class. So you could buy that box from Hobby Lobby, stitch it and drop it in the bottom, bottom of that box. So let me see if there's anything. I don't think there's any other pictures in here that would. Oh, here, here's this one. I don't, it seems like they had a, an ornament that was um, in one of the Just Cross Stitch magazines, one of the Christmas ornaments that looked somewhat like that. So I don't know if it's the same one or not. You guys, this morning I spilled coffee on my silks for Newcastle bouquet. Not a lot, but there was some jumping. I was, you wouldn't believe how fast I can move when I have to. And I, I know there has to be a safeguard. I'm going to have to put mine in a sippy cup from now on. So here is one. This is, I don't know if this is still in production or not. But this, just surely by the name, Glad Tidings, it could be Christmas. It might be something else. But I do think it has a Christmas-esque, that's not a word, but Christmas-esque look to it with the red. And you could darken that red and make it more Christmassy if you wanted to. Um, you could leave off the butterflies, add more stars, drop down the top board. There's so many things you could do with this if you wanted it to be really Christmassy. That one is glad tidings. Now I've seen a lot of people stitch this one. Um, I think Carol Saltbox stitched this one or was stitching it. It says merrily, 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 we welcome spring. And this one, um, a lot of people have said it is a spring pattern, but it looks Christmassy. And I tend to agree. I love these bouquets and I could easily see stitching this and putting it on top of like a paper mache box even a round one, um, because really when you look at the perimeter of the design, it sort of has a round um, design to it, even though their individual pieces aren't round. And that border is awesome. I love that they don't, you know, that it's not the same on all four sides. It's, it's really, it's different on the bottom, which Blackbird does a lot of. Um, so this one, it may be not designed to be Christmas, but has a Christmas look to it. This one is, I think this one's out of print. Um, this one is, what is this called? Blackbird's Winter's Delivery. Now, I think one of the things about this design is that the fabric really makes, <laughs> I mean, it has a huge impact on this design, right? So um, you could you could take probably most of their designs and make it look more Christmassy by removing words that are not Christmas oriented and changing things like the colors of the threads or the color of the fabric. So this one definitely has a, a winter Christmas theme to it. Um, and I do love that fabric. The fabric is, what is this? Oh, that's 28 count cranberry bog from R&R &R Reproductions. Now they use R&R &R quite a bit, which I love R&R &R fabric. I love it. Um, and I don't know that I've ever seen cranberry bog. I have something probably similar that would work for this, but I don't, I don't have that particular 
that particular um, color of their of their fabric. So now Blackbird has a an annual Christmas sampler that they reproduce that they they don't reproduce they design it, and this is the one that's being that has been printed and released in December. It's the fourth one in this series. The first one, which is definitely available, is Fully Snobby. No, this is not Fully Snobby. Dog. This is Merry Christmas. Um, someone just finished this and showed it on one of their stories. I can't remember who it was or one of their um, floss tubes. I love this. And what I love about it is that you could certainly stitch these and hang them together as a collection on the wall. They are similar, I believe, in size, if not the same. And the colors on this absolutely get me. This is a pretty quick stitch. Um, not only is the size not that big, but there is a lot of open space in this one. So um, this one might be on my short list, my sooner rather than later list. The second one is Fully Snobby Dog. Sorry, I had skipped. I thought this was the first one. And this one, look at that. That cursive alphabet in the middle just gets me. And I do, my favorite thing to stitch is bouquets of flowers. So I'm attracted to this type of sampler that has um, a sort of a romantic feel to it. I love that they put the berry border in the middle and um, that there's a lot of color in this one. Isn't that adorable? So that's fully snowy done. The third one is bringing good cheer. Now that border just gets me too on this one because I think red and I like that it's sort of a thick chunky border. It looks different than the others, but it would hang well together because you don't want everything to look this, the same. You don't, I, I don't anyway. I'm not a big fan of matchy matchy. This one is bringing good cheer. Now I want to say that I don't know that this one was intended to be Christmas. All joys for thine. And, and I believe a lot of people have stitched this. And then there's another, this is the inspiration for that piece. So don't you love that Blackbird takes something like this, an antique, and creates this. Such talent. Certainly to me, this has a, um, a Christmas uh, feeling to it, the colors, the of the saying, and those trees. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, let me just take a quick sip here because my throat's starting to get dry. Here's one. Okay, so this one has been re-released. This is a part of a three-part series. And this is what I'm planning to do with this one. I don't know if I want to tell you because then you're all going to do it and I'm not going to want to do it. I'm going to stitch this and I'm going to pull this border and wrap it around. I'll probably put something at the bottom. I'm not sure. I might just put this in a repeat in the bottom and put 2020 or 2021. Um, I really like this one as a standalone. And I wish they would have put an alternative to this, you know, maybe done that with each of these, but these, I'm just really thankful that they got re-released because so many people wanted them. What you don't see, though, is this one on the back with the deer and those pomegranates. I love that. That would be really fast. And that would be a cute pincushion. That could go in your dough bowl. Depends on how, uh, let's see how big that one is. That one is 93 by 132. So it's not huge. You could do a small framed piece like that. You could do just the top and not put the bottom on there and make it a, a more of a square pin cushion also. That one's on my really short list. Although I'll have to see if I've got the threads for that one. Now, um, Home for the Holidays. If you don't have this book, go get this book. It's been printed several times and I do love the stockings. I think um, Julie, Kansas City Girl in Colorado World worked on some of them. I'm not sure how many she's finished. And this one's awesome. Of course, in this book, you've got some bonus 
I always call them bonus charts. Christmas Garden. So if you don't have a leaflet, Christmas Garden is in this book. I'm going to show you my Christmas Garden in a minute. And there's also, the reason why I bought the book, I have the Christmas Garden leaflet, is, um, hold on, a couple things. One, this one, which there was a huge stitch along, I think, two years ago. So it's about time for me to stitch it then, because not as many people are stitching it now. And, you guys, I just love looking at their books. I mean... So inspiring. Definitely makes me want to get out my Christmas stuff and play. And in my craft room, too. But Blessings Be Thine is also in this book. And I did not have that pattern. So I was glad that they included it in this, um, in this book. And I have this one kitted up. So that might be on my short list, too. Oh, let me just show you my, um, my Christmas garden. So I'm so excited for this one to hang. This is the first time I've had it done and framed. And I am looking forward to hanging this in my house this year. Total Framing did the framing on this one. They did a beautiful job. But I, this is such a stunning pattern. And again, I love stitching bouquets of flowers. I do. I love it. One of my all-time favorite stitches. Okay. Joyous Noel. I bought this. We were on a vacation in Hawaii and I saw this. I went to, the, of course, I found a cross stitch store in Hawaii because everywhere I go, I look for a cross stitch store. You never know, right? And this was on the table. It's the only one that they had. This wasn't out of print clearly at the time it was available, but I thought, mm, I don't have that one. And I picked that up. Now I did, I did stitch this one in 2018. And I, I framed this myself. So the frame is pretty good. Not quite perfect, but it's pretty good. And the price point was right. I love the red frame with this. Heidi Cran just showed this on her recent video. And um, yeah, this was fun to stitch because, again, I love a cursive alphabet. There's eyelets in the middle. This is on 40 Count Silvery Moon by Zweigart fabric, which is, a, I love that color. I'm telling you. Not every time do I use overdyed fabric. Sometimes I like a true solid Zweigart base. There's nothing wrong with that. For sure. Now, in this book, you also have a couple berries. And what else is in here? They do so many creative things. A heart pin keep. But look at this. This is so smart. They took pictures and they made ornaments out of them. You just put them in a little, I think a pre, you could just slip it in there and shut the, the case. I thought, gosh, I need to do, that would be so easy to do. Why didn't I think of that? Love letters. Noel. Cute little blackbird. And they have the Paris Noel stocking in here. I haven't seen that one. I might just stitch that one. I thought there was another bigger one in here. There's a 1934 pin keep. That's a cute one. Like a little red sampler. Oh, because the season is in this one too. So if you have this book, it's in this book and it's in this book. So two chances. I don't think the Joyous, Joyous Noel is available. I'm not sure though. Um, a fine collection. This one has a, this is a different style. So this is Blackbird. This one is mid wishing you peace and contentment through the year. December's wishes is what it's called. Uh, this book is called a fine collection. I think this might be out of print, but you do see this one come up on the secondary market, meaning, you know, um, eBay or Etsy or 
Stash and Load. Um, this is a great book. Each month, there is a different design is how they arrange this. But I sort of like the primitive nature of this. And I almost feel like that could be a drum, but I'm not 100% sure because you would all, if you wanted to read it, you'd have to twist around and, and, uh, and read it that way. So it would be kind of a cute, cute drum. The Agnes Platt. Now, Agnes Platt, what I love about this one, this is a strawberry. Again, this sort of, you could certainly make this look more Christmas-like. It, it is a summery um, design, but really, it wouldn't take much for this to look much more Christmassy. You could change those letters and make the letters red and green. Um, you can introduce some gold in there. Yeah. I, I do love that one. One of the anniversaries of the hearts, Snow Garden. Let's ditch this solo. This is more of a winter design. And I was, you know, I was kind of fumbling around looking through my stuff and I found my anniversaries of the heart. I had it kitted up. I thought I had fabric that was a 32 count. It's a 40 count. I have a piece ready to go. I just never started it. And I have the threads ready to go too. All right, I'm going to show you a couple of out of prints, and please don't feel bad. But I wish they would reprint this one. Okay, this is Peppermint and Holly. And there are a lot of just fun, smaller pieces on here that are, um, yeah, I love it. I love this one. Very vintage looking. There are some, these are the other ones that are in the book. So there's a lot of great stuff in here. I hear my garage door opening, so I think my husband's coming in. Winter Wonderland. Again, I wish I would reprint this one. I don't, I would like to start this one too. This might be on my short short list. Um, on this one. Oh yeah. Hi, please. So this book is with, with Needle and Thread. I think this one's out of print. Let Heaven and Nature Sing. And then the last finishes that I think I have for you is Deck the Halls. So I stitched that this, and finished them this year. They go really fast. I put them in a Hobby Lobby, like a cloche. And these are all, they're very classic, but if you look at them, they have a, they certainly have a Christmas theme to them. So you can work on those too. You can do one or two or all of them. Um, yeah. And then last, I would like to show you a couple of quilts from their quilts quilt books. Where did it go? One moment. There's this one with all the holly on it. I really like this one. I'm not sure I would do it on the, the black shirtings background. I think I would do it on a completely different color. I'm not sure. Maybe gray. Maybe a different neutral. I don't know. You could certainly um, do a lot with that one. And then in this book, that last book was called Small Favorites for All Seasons. And this one's called the, When the Cold Wind Blows. And there's this amazing quilt. My friend Lori Textiles is hoping to get started on this one. Okay, I think... That is all I have for today. Um, I, I hope that you're, you're feeling the season and um, you feel encouraged to start some things that are black for Christmas. I hope you feel the coziness and the safety of um, what comes with our community and our craft. And I hope you have a great weekend and we will see you again in a couple of weeks. Have a good one.